Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to another Georgetown Conversations. The purpose of this conversation is to talk to very different people about how do we cope with the post-pandemic world. Uh, there is no doubt that the, the world has changed very profoundly. We have been shut down for more than a month. We've had all had more time to reflect, and we've moved online. And there is no better person uh, to discuss this uh, than Dr. Lili Chan, who is a Georgetown girl, uh, born in Penang, raised in Penang, but went to study in the United States and came back to work in, Hong in Singapore uh, and rose to one of the highest uh, positions uh, uh, not the top, but the one very high position in the National University of Singapore. And uh, Wawasan Open University is extremely lucky to welcome her as the new uh, president vice chancellor to lead the new university in this new time of change. So what I would like to do, Lily, uh, uh, is to have a conversation on what is your, your vision why do you have that vision on the university of the future? And what do you think will do for all of us during this period? Sure. Um, thank you. Thank you, Tan Sri Andrew. Um, it's, um, it, it's at a stage of my life where I felt I have done a lot. And um, I've always done it with... Um, the top university, the top organization, and the experiences that I've gained, I felt can be used to mobilize and change education um, going into the future. And why am I so passionate about it? One of my main um, uh, functions when I was at the National University of Singapore was to instill an entrepreneurial thinking. An entrepreneurial doesn't just mean um, starting a business. It can mean when you look at something, how can you be more entrepreneurial in your thinking? When you solve a problem, how can it be more entrepreneurial? And I define that very, very broadly. Many of the students that I work with, um, while they're good students, you have to be good students to come to National University of Singapore. They sort of the passion in, in, in continuing on with a run-of-the-mill education, uh, content, educational content was a bit boring for them. And we had this program that was going on in Singapore, in, in our university called the National, uh, our NUS Overseas Colleges. And it's not physically setting up a college, it was um, getting the students out of the comfort zone in Singapore, plonk them into a startup company. And the startup companies have to be small, less than 20 people. And there's a reason for that. Um, if they are in a company that is huge, they would not understand and would not feel the pulse of the company. And we realized that as we continue to promote this program and learn how to evolve this program, there's really a group of students who would not fare well in a typical um, heavy course content curriculum. They still need to know, they still need to learn the fundamentals, but it's a work experience that makes a difference to their education. In that one year abroad, um, they are plonked in an environment, their parents are not with them. Uh, we don't even tell them where to go look for an apartment. We don't tell them how to survive. We say, okay, we're going to, you know, fly you there and you guys figure it out. And at the end of the one year, the transformation with that work experience was phenomenal. They could put that work experience into their course content. They now appreciate studying uh, basics in accounting, basics in uh, business plans, basics in whatever you need in business or in their particular field of interest, in engineering, for instance, or even in computer science, they could now relate the, the work experience they have to the course content. So I was actually, when I retired, I was 
thinking of retiring, I was looking for something where I could combine this experience and have and be able to influence the change in education. Well, Sun Open University came out of the blue. Um, people I know were telling me about it. They were looking for a VC. They were asking me if I would be interested, but it is in Penang. And um, that took a bit of thinking. But when I showed up in Penang, when I met the people, when I understood what the whole concept can what it was about and what it is about and what I can do with it, that was the excitement. Majority, I would say 95% of the students at Wawasan Open University are working adults. And I thought an open distance learning university, the working adults would be those mainly in the 50s, mainly in the late 40s. To my surprise, when we looked at the statistics and when I asked for the statistics, over 85% are below the age of 40. And if we um, go down and further analyze it, I would say the majority of that 85% are below 35. This is the group of young people that I'm most excited about. And I felt that moving forward in today's environment, they're all working. Um, they need a degree. How do we as an open distance learning university, provide them the relevant cost content. Now I'm coming from the other side now, they're already working. How do we make the cost content relevant to their working life? How do we ensure that the curriculum that we're delivering will be better utilized in their working life? And, and in this past one year, I think I've learned a lot. And I think I'm quite excited uh, I think we're right at the turning point. And I think COVID, uh, probably this pandemic, probably um, fast track um, the vision and the strategy and what I would like to do with Wawasan Open University. Sorry, That's it's a long, it's a, it's a roundabout way to get to that point, to that not question. At all. But not I, at I all. I felt you needed, I needed uh, a bit of background. Yeah. What came through, uh, Lily, is that you have the passion. And I think what we, we have forgotten is that creativity uh, is all about passion, right? right? You, the, the, the people who, who, who want to do new things, who, who want to learn, are the people who think, who understand, and then who act, and then learn from the very action of delivery where they made the mistake. And then the creation becomes interactive, cooperative, and you know, everybody moves to something new. So I think the university is extremely lucky to have you in the leadership during a very pro problematic time. Thank now, you. now it's, you know, the most difficult part, as we all know, yes. is that we've moved from a physical education person-to-person uh, uh, -person education towards an online education, right? The, 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 we're moving from a physical world to a virtual or uh, metaphysical world, right? Right. The, 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 the point is that in the old days, uh, Aristotle's students uh, sat around him, you know, talked with him, and he talked about everything under the sun. I think I just read Buckminster Fuller last night <laughs> and he, 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 he put his finger right on it. We got into trouble because we became very linear and very specialized. Now the linear is exactly the supply chain. You go through, in a sense, a factory. You go through kindergarten, you go to primary school, you go to secondary school, and then you stream into university. And once you're in university, you stream into a particular field. The result is that you learn more and more about less and less, and your viewpoint becomes very narrow, and it becomes very difficult to understand you know, the context in which uh, uh, life is changing, right? right? So every person in the silo decides the other fellow is wrong, right. Right? right? And somebody at the top who has to 
So get everybody to work together. Finds it's very difficult to get people to agree because everybody thinks that they are right, you know, in this age. <laughs> and, and if they're not right, they go into the internet. They see only what the, the, the search engines tell them they want to see, right? Because right. all you say, well, I like this. And immediately Google will tell me what I like, right? right? right. And does not tell me what I do not like. Okay, and in fact, rejects what I do not like. So right. my, my views become even more extreme. Right. Now, what, it, what Wawasan Open University is very lucky is that, as you say, you have students who are actually already working. Yes. And they want to learn because they want to improve themselves. But how do they become even more effective right. in the context when the right. context is changing itself? That means, you know, some jobs are going to disappear. Correct. And it's Correct. very clear, those people who have got online skills. Correct. Creativity skills, adaptation skills will be winners. Correct. So how do you think, you know, Wawasan Open University can help them in this? Right. One of my, one of my dreams and vision is um, in the Malaysian education system, you've got... Um, foundation courses students have to take and the universities also provide certain foundation courses. And one of my vision, and I'm not sure if it can be done, but I'm pretty sure we can get it done, is every student who comes in to Awasan Open University has to take a course in the fundamentals of programming. Um, we do have a generic course called Computers in a Network Society. Um, we need to um, make the content more interesting. It talks about the evolution of, you know, where the first computer is and where we are today. And that course content needs constant updating. But if we can make um, coding and programming very, very simple, right? It, 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 so that people are not afraid of it. Um, and if every student who comes into Wawasan Open University takes this course and we can have a uh, uh, course fundamental 101A, fundamental 101B. 101A could be for someone who is a little bit more comfortable with the equipment and the devices. 101B could be someone less comfortable with it. If every student were to take that, and we have 20,000 students in our database, um, it would change their life somewhat, right? The COVID and the pandemic situation also made me realize that it's not changing just our students. I need to change internally in Wawasan Open University. Um, our staff needs to be um, computer literate, digitally lit literate. Um, and it, it, the three months has been a learning journey to be honest, for most of them, including faculty, including tutors. They are uncomfortable, right? But I think slowly, I think when one is forced into the situation, you, you will have to pick it up. You will have to learn. Um, so if we were to offer this programming fundamental or coding fundamental, and you can do it in whatever way you, you can do that, enough of this material that you can pull together a course very, very simply um, and make it fun. All our staff will also have to do it. That, that is a change in thinking, right? It teaches one to think not just linearly, but in a holistic, because you get a problem set. You get a very simple problem where you have to figure out the multi ways that you can put a program together or you can code something or even do a very simple app together. And I think that would excite people. So we have started to think about that. We have started to look into it. Um, we will start to offer it to all our science and technology students first as, a first as a first course and subsequently to put it across. And there's now talk within our faculty that, okay, business school students, because they now need to understand data analytics. If they're not comfortable with just simple coding, simple programming, simple writing of codes when they're trying to link data together, it will be very hard for them uh, as time moves forward. So I'm, I'm quite excited because I think the fact that a few faculty are now feeling excited about this and we've hired, brought in young people. Actually, Wawasan Open University at this point in time, 
probably is the only university in Malaysia that is saying we are hiring, right? Um, and we are hiring um, to help us transform this university to what I think it can be. Um, but it takes time, as you know. Besides that, besides that, as a very simple thing, um, we are relooking, and hopefully in January, um, we can launch it with all the proper approvals, regulatory approvals in place. We want to start offering programs where in the first year, even if the students are working or students who are in mid-career changes, they will have to be closely linked to a company. And um, in that process of company and curriculum, we will redesign so that the, it can be quite high touch in the first three months, but we're piloting it. Once we've piloted it, I think we can scale and we can duplicate this program in our KL office, our JB office, and the various regional centers we have. Um, the curriculum is quite intense. We're offering, we hope to offer two different curriculums. One is software engineering, but it's not your traditional software engineering. The other one is in digital marketing, digital business and marketing. This is totally new, right? Um, with this age group of students in their 30s, um, if you teach them the usual fundamentals in business administration and business and management, it will not work in the coming years. So we are totally revamping and we are talking to companies who can now come in from day one to work with us and start to, I hate to use this word, but I guess hot house, a pilot group of students through these programs in the next one year. Um, I think it'll be very exciting. We have gotten some very good feedbacks from traditional academic members outside of our university. So, so I think change is coming. And ideally, I would like to do this, not just for this new program, but slowly start to introduce this into all our existing programs. I think um, instead of introducing more and more programs for a university like ours, we need to take what we do best. And those few curriculum and programs that we do best in, how do we make it more relevant and how do we increase the number of students in these programs? You know, you, you, are, you understand accounting. That's a very popular program in Malaysia, not just at Wawasan Open University. How do we make that more interesting? How do we tell the students who come in, and, and they may be a bookkeeper right now, they may be doing traditional uh, low level, you know, uh, data entry, uh, hoping one day to be an accountant. Uh, how do we start to teach them and educate them so that by the time they finish at Wawasan Open University, they're way ahead. So, so these are some of the things that we're slowly, slowly trying to put in place. Thank you very much indeed. That's exactly what uh, the Georgetown Institute of Open and Advanced Studies is trying to do. Uh, yes. What, what uh, uh, I, I mean, it's all a learning process for me. I think the COVID, originally, I thought the old way was to get some of the top people in the world, some, some very good friends of mine, uh, to come to Penang. And everybody can have a good party, meet, talk, and enjoy. And then I realized, my goodness, with the COVID, they can't travel. And everybody's now moving online. So why don't we do this online? And the few, a few experiments, and some of you will be able to see this through the Georgetown Conversations, I will be bringing some of the top brains in their fields to actually explain in as simple language as possible what the lessons they have in their field. Right. Right? right. And what we're trying to do is to have a conference that will then get them together and tell you why is it that in your field, you have the same barriers as somebody else in the other field. And if you put them all together, suddenly you find that we're all talking across each other. And that if we understand each other better, we can actually work together rather than fighting each other. 
Because when we fight each other, yeah. we actually don't move, right? In fact, yeah. if, if anything, we retrograde. But if we actually work together, and so what you pointed out is that a lot of the barriers to learning yes. is that we separate the working from the learning. Yes. But actually, we forgot, as Buckminster Fuller said, that work and learning is one. Right. Right? That we, we learn as we work and we work as we learn. Right? right. So um, it's the practical application. Right. And why you do not learn is because you are afraid. And it's, it's like, uh, just to share a personal experience, I'm of the generation who started working with the first computers. And yes. they were using cards. They were using yes. cards. And then we were the first to learn what today is called Excel, but Lotus 1, 2, 3, where you actually learn how to use the spreadsheet. And then you were also supposed to learn how to code that. But it was so complicated that, and then one was busy with something else, that one never got through that barrier of thinking. I, I, I think, you know, in a sense, um, you know, it, it was a missed opportunity for myself because I missed the opportunity of learning the coding, which today is become a necessity, right? And then I only then realized that actually everything's an algorithm because if, 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 if when, 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 when there is a body of knowledge, like a formula, like an Excel, like a word, that algorithm would then help you to advance to the next field to the next step, right? So our challenge uh, as educators is how to make it interesting. Absolutely. Move that fear, okay? And then the, the secret then is to bring in the experts who say it's actually not that difficult. I think, I think Tansri, I think one of the, the very fact that you're doing this with uh, GEOS um, and bringing in and recording your Georgetown conversations, recording your conferences and making it available um, is one way that I feel as a university, our students, they don't realize how lucky they are. If you're working in a bank today and in, in one of your many series, they get to meet these people online in, in Zoom, in Microsoft Teams, in whatever format. It's so exciting for them because they would normally just see it on TV. They would read it in a newspaper. But here in your sessions, um, they get to see them. They get to hear them. They get to hear all these discussions. And these eventually will become uh, supplementary materials in our course curriculum at Wawasan Open University. I think, I think that to me is also the other exciting part. Just, just imagine the number of people we can interview, the number of people you can bring on board to discuss and, and, and for our students to have these as supplemental reading materials, I think it will make the course curriculum, the course content a little bit more real rather than theoretical all the time and all the way. Uh, and, and I think this is something that, uh, this, these are some of the changes that I think Wawasan well, Open University will need to start to incorporate. And that's what we are considering and planning to do. We are small. Um, we have the ability to be flexible now. When we get bigger, it's a bit harder. And once you set all these, and once you know, we can set all these foundations in place, I think it'll be quite an exciting place for students to come. That's, that's, again, you know, how I see the connection between GEOS and WOU. Yes, we can only do this cooperatively. I mean, uh, yes. the point is that we need to have feedback, right? Because if the students tell us what, you know, and sometimes they, they themselves would not know, what is the mental block in this area, Yeah. right? Uh, uh, I can explain it from my own experience, like what is debit, what is credit, what is asset, what's the liability, okay? Uh, and, and, and how do you actually you know, uh, uh, overcome this fear? I mean, you know, some people do it the old style, well, just memorize it, right? right. Uh, but, but they don't understand it. 
And right. my own way of learning is that I have to do it before I understand, and then I can explain it easier. Yeah. So if the students and the lecturers, uh, if they give us feedback of what they want, what they think are the most important questions in their field, through my connections, uh, I can actually invite some of the top financial controllers, some of the top auditors, uh, some of the top bankers, Absolutely. investment bankers, asset managers, right? Uh, 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 quants, that means the people who work in the quantitative field. Right. Some of the back office people, right? right. Stock broker. Each right. of them, I can invite them to come in and just share with us. Yeah. You know, some of the secrets of how they look at the world how do they do their job so that the person who goes into looking for a job begins to understand, oh, if I decide to become an auditor, what's the biggest problem, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think that'll be very, very exciting. I think the, um, uh, our school of business, um, the Bachelor of Accounting degree um, needs inputs as such. Our students, if they get an opportunity to start to listen to some of these, we can collect the feedbacks back. Um, everything is now online. One, one of the challenges we had at uh, Wawasan Open University is the students access material through our learning management system, which is online. Um, but unfortunately, our materials are in a heavy textbook format, right? So we need to, and, and we have started with about 50 different courses now, to make that content interactive. Interactive learning guide that we are now re redoing um, will allow links into such uh, conversations, will allow links into um, videos and materials from all over the web with, within regulations. And the students then will be able to give their feedback because when they submit their assignments, we have a survey in place. And we just recently collected 10,000 feedbacks over the three month COVID period when they submitted their assignments. Um, the information is quite telling. And if we do this continuously, for the first time in Wawasan, we were able to collect feedbacks from, from, of course, you will have some that are not so good, some that are critical, some that are more positive, and some that gives you suggestion. And as you analyze this, both quantitatively and qualitatively, um, it will give us room to improve. And I think with such feedbacks, we will be able to bring back comments on you know, um, connecting to links of such conversations. I think this is really, really exciting for, for accounting. And, and I'd like to see how we can incorporate it into our course materials and our course content. It will make us very different from well, other see, universities. Uh, Lily, what uh, the specialization and the linear sort of uh, uh, sequential approach mm -hmm. is wrong is that uh, what we forget is that uh, during the, and what the COVID uh, uh, um, exposed was this uh, linear approach. Mm -hmm. uh, let, 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 let me put to you right. why this is. Um, use Amazon.com, right? Um, I want to advertise to you uh, through my algorithms uh, what you like. Right. Because you click on it, then you say, I, I like this book, then I show you what book you want to buy. Mm -hmm. And as long as you have money, uh, you can buy. Uh, and then uh, if you can't buy, uh, if you don't have the money, uh, here's a credit card, right? Uh, and then, but what happens in the COVID? Suddenly I discover that I don't have income, so I can't buy. Right. So I lose and Amazon loses and the right. whole society loses. But if you really look at some of the Chinese systems, uh, like, 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 like WeChat and uh, Alibaba, it's a two-way process. Uh, you can actually earn money on, 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 online. So what I really mean is that the feedback mm. mechanism is a two-way process. Mm. If I earn on the, uh, uh, the, 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 the 
tech platform, I can actually then pay for things I like and learn and work at the same time. So what, what, what we're really beginning to see is that we cannot work on the basis, you know, like a sausage factory, I'm sorry to use the term, I produce a sausage, I hope somebody will buy it. I produce a student, I hope the employer will employ. What we actually Correct. go straight out to the employer and Correct. say, what do you want? Yes. What content, what curricula do you want? Yes. What type of, stu- what type of graduates do you want to employ? Yes. Share with us your uh, uh, um, uh, uh, course content. Yes. What do you want? We'll train them for you. Yes. And then b- with an interactive feedback, the students, once they get out, will have an employment. Absolutely. Now, now, but that can happen real time, you see? So in a sense, that we, if we think sequentially, we produce a curriculum 10 years ago. We then produced a textbook eight years ago. Right. And then we never change. Correct. But in the meantime, the company has changed dramatically. Absolutely. The whole society has changed dramatically. The techniques have changed uh, dramatically. And so, you know, if you're teaching old uh, things, you're actually looking at the 21st century with 19th century glasses. Absolutely. And that's exactly the problem that we face today. Absolutely. So I think what I, what, what, what I think, you know, it's very important for us as a, as a newer university who should not have that baggage to move on to the online interactive algorithmic uh, 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 adaptive situation whereby employers see us as the place to go for for the best trained graduates that fit their needs, yes. right? That fit their needs. Yes. And so this is a cooperative effort that is, yes. you know, very critical. How do we yes. build that platform and the ecosystem is, 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 is really the, the challenge. I think, I think, Tansri, I think you, you've, you've read my mind. You've um, summarized it so well. This is where WOU will be moving into, and that's where the excitement is. In fact, um, when we launch these two new programs, we are in the process of doing just a very simple renovation on a very open space. And in fact, I'm telling my faculty, I'm sorry, um, well, using COVID as a reason and excuse, we need social distancing. We need people to be fluid. We need people to move in and out of our building, the faculty, and not sit in your little cubby hole and not see anybody the whole day. Um, so there's going to be a transformative change in the thinking. We're actually putting up a, I hate to use the word co-working, it's really not, but it's an open space where the students from various programs, and especially those in the new programs, will have to sit there because they will have enough projects to do during the day, and where we will invite companies to come in, right, one at a time, for them to sit there, discuss with the students, identify these students as their potential interns. And I would want the companies to be able to hire them as interns if these students do not already have a job, such that at the end of the one year of the first year program, we're front loading a lot of the skill sets in the first year. Um, The companies will find them useful interns. I'm also talking to companies where they will bring us their projects. Just very simple project solutions that you need, that your staff may not have the time to do. So we're piloting things like that in this new new initiative. And I want these students to be able to do it. You've studied this, the theory, the algorithm, whatever in in class. And the class is not going to be taught face-to-face. We're streaming in. So we are curating our course content for these new programs through streaming in by the who's who or very experienced people who may be in Italy, maybe. They're not teaching, they're facilitating, they're giving you an alternative view to what it is. We will have our own faculty members on the ground to be the ones to to ensure that the learning is in place. But by opening it up this way, in talking to some pure traditional academics, they are telling us um, this is different. They haven't seen anything like this in Malaysia before. Um, 
let us know when you can make it work. So, <laughs> like, big problem. <laughs> exactly. Like everything else uh, is the execution and the implementation. And, and you know this, right, Tan Sri? Because everyone has great visions. Everyone can would want to do this. Oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Here's the big vision. Here's a big strategy. The key is the execution and the implementation. And all my years in working in Singapore and the United States, um, in a leadership position, it is the implementation and the execution that makes the difference. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed. My colleagues at WOU can support this and can get this through. Um, and there's an air of excitement in this while we're still trying to um, take the legacy thinking out of the way. But, but it's a slow process. It will, take, it will take time. It can't happen overnight. Um, but yeah, without the execution and implementation, it won't work. Otherwise, it'll still be worse. And I hope a year from now, when we talk about this again, we can see some action on the ground and not, uh, and not just talk again, right? Um, well, well, Lily, as you know, um, uh, visions without uh, execution is delusion. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and uh, anybody can give you a recipe how to, how to make fried rice. Yes. But there is a huge difference between an amateur making fried rice like me or a master <laughs> who actually just used the same ingredients but knows exactly when to uh, heat the, Put the, yeah. the, everything, the ingredients, heat the thing properly and get it perfect taste, right? So it's all about skills and artistry. But it's done with experience, right? It's done with experience. So I think you have to, we all have to go through the, 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 these, this, this painful process of learning. Yeah. And, you know, what, as you were discussing, it, it strikes me that with open learning these days, particularly with Zoom, even the employer can join the class. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? And Absolutely. The, 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 the HR person who's going to hire the next generation can join the class, including the CEO. He can absolutely. He, you know, he or she can actually join the Zoom class and see what is this. What is this group of students doing? Right? Are they sleeping? Uh, are they enjoying themselves? Uh, is the teacher actually teaching what I want? Do I like the teacher? Do I like the content? Absolutely. Do I like the students? Right? And actually, what is a university? What is a company? It's all about people. Yeah. And so if they get the talent, which is yeah. what they want to discover, then they can move on to the next level. Right. So I right. think, you know, not having the old baggage of, oh, that's the only way we did it before. <laughs> and, you know, we don't know how to do it when the context change. That's going to be the most difficult part. And, it, yeah. and, and, and I totally understand because I've gone through this several times in my career. Right, I, working with very very difficult uh, uh, change uh, circumstances. Absolutely, I think I think the spirit must be willing, and 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 even during the three months when um, COVID started and when it went into MCO, um, I suppose I knew that this was going to happen, and had already started to put into preparation what's going to happen if. We all have to be sheltered in, space, uh, in, in place or, or, or MCO as Malaysia calls it or in Singapore we call it circuit breaker. We realized many of our staff would not be able to cope. And we moved several uh, desktop computers back home. And obviously at that point in time, I haven't touched a desktop I don't know since when, I think for the last 25 years, whenever the notebook came out, it was my workstation wherever I went. Um, but of course, in a university like WOU in Penang, um, you know, there was a reason to have desktops. But now everybody started to realize. And, and notebooks today are not that much expensive compared to a fixed desktop. So the future of work is no longer stuck in one place. And that is a big mindset change 
for our staff at WOU. Um, the fact that we know whether they're working or not, they're not, we're not going to count how many hours they are working, is the output. Yes. And if you're looking at output and outcome of a particular staff, um, whoever is a supervisor also needs to think through how do I measure it, right? Instead of just saying, oh, you're, you're here eight hours, I know you're doing your work. But in essence, you may not be. You may be dreaming four hours of the day. But this, I think, is a major change in any organization, not just at WOU, right? How do you know? And, and there are, I know there are bosses who are always worried. If I don't see my staff, I know they're not working. But it isn't that. And, and I think I also have to say that I'm quite um, fortunate and I'm proud of the fact that during these three months, um, Wawasan went through, WOU went through a lot of changes. We had our challenges, we had our problems, but the university functioned and worked well. We have our students. Of course, there are times when we had complaints whenever we started something new, but things sort of settled down and it's now become the norm. The work has become the norm, right? Um, faculty who haven't been in their little cubby holes for the last three months now cannot come back and tell me that I need a room to myself. You've been able to work at home. You've been able to work in various places, your parents' house, your, your, so your in-law's house with your desktop computer or your, your notebook. You now can work anywhere within Wawasan. So the concept of an enclosed space as a work office will slowly disappear, and especially in education, especially in educational institutions, right? Um, a typical professor cannot say that I can't teach if I don't see my students face to face. Um, I can't get to the library. The materials are all on the web. That's you right. can get them, right? And, and I also hear from my students and, and our faculty and our tutors that in some of their classes, the students are much more vocal. Um, the shyness is taken out of them. They're now, they have this shield, the computer in front of them. They're asking questions, um, which I thought was quite interesting because these are all the positive feedbacks that's coming in. And I was also told that in, for some of the tutorials that used to only have 50% students showing up because they are working, they don't have the time. Now, we have almost 80 to 100% attendance, which means that they don't have to drive to our regional center to show up physically. They are now on Zoom, they are now on Microsoft Teams, and they are being engaged. And, and you made a comment, even the bosses can you know, go show up in these classes. And it is actually happening. A few of our um, uh, more engaging faculty members have actually gone into the tutorial rooms while the tutorials are being done online, right? And the students have a surprise. Oh, I've never seen you before. And you say, yes, I'm the course lead. I'm the person in charge of this. And this is your tutor in JB, in KL. So, and some of our classes for tutorials have also been combined, right? If there are only two students in JB, we used to have one tutor. Now we have two students in JB, five students in KL, 10 students in Penang. We pick the best tutor to run that course online to support the students. And the students are also communicating with one another across the country. These are the positive things that I see coming out of this period. You know, it's difficult for all of us, but this, this, you know, I can see the ray of light coming out uh, of this situation. And, and, and I'm quite, um, quite upbeat that we can transform WOU in the coming years. Thank you. That's uh, excellent. I just want to share with you a, a, a personal story of how to, ma to, to manage change. Okay. I, I, I took over the, as chairman of the Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission. You know, Hong Kong is one of the biggest markets yes. in the world, right? Stock markets in the world. And when I took over, I told them, look, we can't rest on our laurels. China's market is going to take over. Right. And uh, this is what we need to do. We need to upgrade our technology. We need to upgrade our talent skills. And we need to move into new areas. 
At the end of this uh, speech, which I thought was supposed to be inspiring, somebody put their hand up and said, Mr. Chairman, you will be gone in three years' time and we will still be here. Right. And then I realized, my God, this is a mindset change problem. Yes. Okay? So what I then did was to bring some of the top and some of the other team members to Shanghai and Shenzhen to see what's going on. Right. And then they suddenly realized, my God, they thought we're top of the world. No way these guys can catch up. And today, the turnover of Shanghai plus Shenzhen is double that of Hong Kong. Double that of Hong Kong. The city of Shenzhen, 40 years ago, was a rice field. Today, the GDP of Shenzhen is larger than Hong Kong. What it tells you that the world is changing very fast. Yes. And if your mindset doesn't change with it, you either eat lunch or be lunch. Right. You either learn or you're going to be blown away. You're going to be marginalized. So I think, you know, this is true not only of great countries, great cities, but also individually. A company that you thought was doing very well, if they don't cope with this COVID, it's gone. That means your employment is gone, right? Same with an individual. If you don't learn during this COVID period, you know, you you may find not only the job is not there, but how do you get the next job is going to be there. So the 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 your vision of how to place the university in this transformative role in which the university itself has to transform is clearly the way to go. So I want to congratulate you and I think this was a very useful uh, and hopefully helpful uh, uh, interview uh, and that people, everybody will learn from this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.